The all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. It's a featherweight knockout. The lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water. Exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's Thursday, April 4th, 2024, and we are looking towards the weekend where everything is open for business in terms of trout fishing throughout the region. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and yes, Delaware as well. Always big news this time of year. And American Shad snapping as well, not too far behind me, uh, from where I'm standing here at Old School Outdoors in Ewing, uh, right near Trenton. And yeah, Shad on the move up the Delaware River as well. But before we move into trout and shad and everything else, let's talk about something that's even bigger. To lead off this week's video fishing forecast, Jim Hutchinson, of course, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Now this past Friday, Good Friday, it was late in the afternoon, we were finishing up with uh, uh, the new digital weekly edition. Of course, you subscribers, you saw that on Monday. We're back to the digital weekly, 26 of them. For everybody who's a sub sub subscriber to the show, uh, to the uh, to the to the magazine, the show is free. You got to get the magazine, the twenty nine ninety five a year subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. So your email address is loaded every week with all the tactical information. And on Monday, you saw Michaela Stryker on the cover with a trout from Spruce Run Creek. Now, anyway, in this group text on Friday, while we're still working, um, Roxanne Wilmer from Gray Fish Tag Research and our Northeast Striped Bass Study. She said that a mini pat satellite device um, from a jumbo striper that was caught November 26th, 2023, off the Jersey coast, North Jersey, just below Rockaway, New York, Chuck Manny, of course. Well, that jumbo striped bass that was carrying that tag was a 38 eight inch fish. The tag came free about a mile off the beach at Lavalette. All right, so Roxanne starts tracking the lat lawn from this satellite tracking device. Um, now, I want you to think about this. The fish was caught in November. It was 38 inches at that point. And last week, that tag pops off just a mile off the beaches at the Jersey Shore. So when that tag was put back into that 38 inch fish that, that Chuck caught back in November, that tag has been, been collecting uh, light data, temperature data, depth data stored inside that tag for 120 days, four months, so that we should theoretically find out exactly where that fish has been for the last four months. And again, that was caught uh, like 20, 30 miles north of where that tag popped up off of Lavalette. So Roxanne keeps tracking this tag for a couple of days, right? And on Good Friday, it appears that that tag is somewhere along the beach around uh, Geyer Avenue in Lavalette. So I'm thinking, based on that Friday group text, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna go walk the beaches of Lavalette first thing Saturday morning, see what I can find. But Jenny Ackerman, she had some time in the afternoon. She said, I'm gonna grab Scotty from Grumpy's Tackle. We're gonna go up to the beach, see what we can find out, right? And Good Friday suddenly turns into Great Friday. Realizing that this past weekend was all about Easter egg hunts, these two wide-eyed surf rats go scrambling around the beach in search of a needle in a haystack. Yet about two hours later, I get a text from Jenny. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now I wanna give you something to think about here. That tag that we found on the beach on Good Friday, it came from a fish that was at least 38 inches in length, because that's what it was in November. Maybe it's 39, maybe it's 40 inches now, right? And it was just off the beaches of Lavalette last week, and those big fish of that size range, they all travel together. And honestly, that's why we talked about it last week. That's why the big Jamaica was out fishing for stripers outside of Manasquan last Saturday. They caught a few, caught a few keepers, caught a few releases, and they're heading back out again on Saturday. So you think about that on top of the fact that there are already 30 and 40 inch striped bass moving up the Delaware, around Salem, up the Raritan Bay, staging for this spring spawn. So anyway, I saw Dan Trott posted uh, uh, last week, uh, a Photoshop Sharpie was used there. 
to back black out the background because you want to protect your spots, of course. But that's clearly what looks to be a 40 inch class size fish released somewhere ostensibly on the Delaware River. Meanwhile, up on the rare Easter Sunday, the Dark Horse Charter Fishing Crew took a personal day on the boat because Captain Justin posted how he wanted to take his mom out on Easter Sunday, given the fact that his mom was the one who taught him how to fish. So Justin says, quote, we started out with a tough bite, picking one here and there. He said there was nothing really except great readings, but he said, let's steam off someplace else and see if we can't find a fish. And lo and behold, mom landed a gorgeous 41 inch striper on the Raritan Bay on Easter Sunday. And he said, quote, everything we caught that day was tagged and released. Again, tagging information is fantastic, right? Now on Tuesday this week, I got a message from John Gramello. Tuesday, right? He said, got them good in the rain today, up to 42 inches. Some were loaded with row. And this was back bay and inlet fishing somewhere in South Jersey. John didn't tell us where, but he did say that he was tossing some Z-Man paddle tails. And he said he felt he owed it to us to share the latest reports because of all the information we share here. Well, I appreciate it, John, because we couldn't share the information without getting the reports from the anglers who are out there getting it done, even though we all are careful not to burn spots and disrespect others. But we've established Raritan Bay, Delaware Bay, South Jersey inlets, back bays, and again, that tag of a 38 inch plus fish just off of Lavalette last week. So again, what does this logically tell you? For starters, based on our reports here at the Fisherman Magazine and the tagging data through Grayfish Tag Research and our ongoing Northeast Striped Bass study, big spawning class stripers don't care what your textbook says. They're clearly up the rivers and bays and out along the front beaches now. This is real data. It's substantiated by the catch reports we're getting from anglers like John and Captain Justin and all the other guys who are sharing from here, where we live, where we play in New Jersey. Now, the second thing it says to me, this tag and all this information, it says that there's so much more that we need to learn about striped bass, which is why I'm gonna ask you again, check in on the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine. That's the one that's out on newsstands now. It's here at Old School Outdoors, right on the front counter. It's got Trent Cole, former Eagles defensive end, on the cover with a giant striper. But inside that magazine, turn to page 40 of the glossy section for my article on Striper Quest 24. That is our annual day of striper tagging. The event comes up on Thursday, May 16th. We're putting more mini pat devices and jumbo stripers, but we're also turning it into the largest single day of striper tagging anywhere in the world. So we're opening it up to the public. We've got a bunch of tournament prizes. Sponsors are coming into town. Uh, Penn, AFW High Seas, Seaguar, Chris Bishop from Missouri. All this great information that we're getting out of the Northeast Stripe Bass Study, but we want you to be a part of it on May 16th. We've got a 50 boat field. We're locking it in at that, and again, all striped bass tagging that day, catch and release. We'll see how many tags we can put in striped bass on the rare on May 16th. Hope you will join us. This, of course, will help us put more satellite tags into these jumbo stripers, like the one, this one, 38 inches when it was tagged off of North Jersey in November and is now ostensibly someplace out along the front coast, perhaps even moving inside Raritan Bay at this point. But again, I'm thinking that's got to be a close to 40 inch striper right now. And again, that's out front. So yeah, the stripers are here. There are other articles, of course, in that monthly April edition when you pick it up. Matt Stone's article on getting that great kayak shot. Well, that's appropriate because Christopher Marquinhos, he had his friend snap a photo over the weekend, said the night bite went El Fuego on the top of the tide. He had 15 bass, Raritan Bay, from 30 to 48 inches. And he was slow trolling a back bay jointed senior troller in Blurple. This fish estimated at around 30, 35 pounds, a wet release, the way to do it. By the way, here's some breaking news for you. The Fisherman Magazine will have our coastal kayak clash again in 2024. We're working to get all the details, all the rules together, all the prizes. Stay tuned here in the next couple of weeks. 
we'll let you know when the Coastal Kayak Clash of 24 kicks off. Also inside that April edition, exclusive to New Jersey Delaware Bay edition readers, you've got the Dreamboat update. That kicks off May 1st, right? Nick Konicheski, he's chasing tide runners in the front surf. Jenny Ackerman, a sneak inside of her spring plug bag, what you'll need right now for the month of April. An inshore tuna primer for later this season by Captain Scott Newhall and Tom P's 2024 stock report. All the trout being stocked in the Garden State in advance of this Saturday's opener. Now, over the weekend, the Easter weekend, Jenny Ackerman was out there with the guys from the Shark River Surf Anglers. And of course, they were stocking Spring Lake for this Saturday's opening day festivities. This free youth event from the Shark River Surf Anglers, April 6th, it runs from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. As always, always, it is offered free of charge to children, children only, age 15 and under. The Shark River Gang, uh, they award a sensational grand prize uh, to an overall winner. They have first, second, and third place, place prizes to individual winners in various uh, uh, age classes. I believe there are four of them. And every kid goes home a winner because every kid gets a goodie bag filled with some great stuff uh, for the 2024 season. And again, I said Jenny was there on Saturday showing off some of the jumbo trout that are being dis deposited in Spring Lake. But what's the big news too, in addition to all this other stuff? Rain, more rain, nothing but rain. April showers, May flowers, whatever you wanna figure out. Well, I'll tell you what, Jenny's got some tips in open boat this week for staying dry. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. Today we are with Tom from Tsunami Tackle and Bimini Bay Outfitters, and we're checking out the Tsunami Salt X Surf Top, an excellent surf top for both the fall, the spring, and on the boat, and Tom's gonna tell us why it is a great pick. Hi everybody, this is the new Tsunami Salt X Sea Hook Splash and Surf Top. It is made out of a uh, Teflon coated, 20K waterproof and breathable <laughs> nylon material. All the seams are uh, taped, so you don't have to worry about water intrusion through the seam. It has a very well-designed neoprene cuff with a Velcro closure system. The neoprene is s snug enough that spray and water does not easily come up the sleeve while you're fishing, but is also comfortable enough that it won't start irritating you after hours on the water. The end of the Velcro strap is all welded Velcro, so that when you put the hook and loop system across, you have no tab hanging out at the end, which won't snag fly line or any other fishing line while you're fishing. Front pocket, great for storing a small tackle tray. YKK zipper that is seamed. Welded YKK seamed zipper on the gusseted neck. So when you open it up, you do have the added gusset there, so spray and splash doesn't immediately intrude in. And then you have uh, the flap that comes across with the Velcro tabs to cinch it down so uh, get a little more uh, security there. The best part about it, retail price is only $119.99. You can't beat that. Yeah, something I really like about this is how light it is. You can layer up with it. You can wear it during the spring and the fall, or you can even wear it out on the boat. Very comfortable. Definitely my favorite is the sleeves. My pet peeve with surf top sleeves is just that tight neoprene and it gets in the way. So having this strap and all the features to it really makes it a top surf top on the market that you should check out at Tsunami or your local tackle shops. So get ready for the spring run and consider getting yourself a Tsunami Saltex surf top. In addition to trout, of course, you've got American Shad on the move up the Delaware. And I'm here at Old School Outdoors at 604 Bear Tavern Street in Ewing. It's not too far from Trenton Mercer Airport, which if you've never flown out of there to go back and forth to Florida, highly recommend that. But if you're looking to get into the shad action, the gear and the advice on where to go, you should visit Old School Outdoors. It's just a couple of miles up Sullivan Way off of Route 29 there that goes through Trenton and Flemington, all those areas. You old Harry's Army, Navy, and Sportsman Outpost guys will love this. You gotta stop by and check it out. John Bullock opened the shop last year. 
Uh, John actually uh, builds skateboards. He always has. So if you're looking for skate gear as well, you can stop in here. But he's got everything in terms of fishing and skateboarding. And if you're a kid or a kid at heart, you're gonna love that aspect. Old School has plenty of shad gear, as I mentioned, the Steve's Leaves, Hillbilly's Fishing, Shadalac Lures from Kevin Ingram. He's got the, the medium and the, uh, the rosy reds, a great trout bait. He's got shiners. He'll always keep the, the, the live bait in here. Plus he's got blood worms that they're actually in an aerated tank which John says he works to keep them even fatter uh, uh, than normal. So you gotta come check that out. But it's a busy corner. If you're driving through Ewing, if you know this area, there's not a lot, it's, you go through these little pockets. Well, here's this one corner. You got a 7-Eleven across the street. Uh, in fact, George Washington and his troops, they marched through this area, literally, telling you the truth. Stop by Old School Outdoors or give John a call if you have any questions, 609-227. 8142. Now, for more on the freshwater scene, trout and shad, let's go across the river. We'll check in with George, the Pocono outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, we're going to start off the, the report here with some shad fishing, and it looks like clockwork. Every spring, we start to get that shad bite rolling, and we get that, that spring rain, and it washes everything right down. Uh, hopefully, this, the rains this week aren't too bad. I'm not sure we're going to get a lot of shad fishing in this weekend, but we're certainly going to give it a try. Hopefully, next week will be much better. But we did have a few guys check in, getting that run going uh, right before the storms. Tim Keebler, of course, checked in, getting into a bunch of nice row. Uh, down there on the river. Also, we had Kevin Ingram check in. He got a bunch himself. Uh, he said he got about 40, including some really big girls uh, out there on the Delaware River. Now, also on the Delaware River, I had uh, Bruce Pashley check in. Uh, he wanted to let us know that the stripers are also in the river. Um, if you can tell by this phone, he wasn't giving away any secrets where, where he's catching these fish, so no spot burning there, but great fish there, Bruce, as well. Over in the Lehigh River, guys are still catching fish as well. Again, they'll be running high and fast after these storms, but uh, right before guys are out getting some fish, uh, some smallmouth, uh, actually a few brown trout in the mix. And my good friend, Josh Taylor was out with uh, river guide, uh, Steve Kolnick on Gravy Boat Guide Service, and he got him himself into a pretty nice little carp there for the Lehigh River. Uh, of course, that was quickly caught and released as well. So great work there, Josh. Now, trout opens up statewide here in Pennsylvania and New Jersey on Saturday. I had uh, Tom Lawrence check in. His boy, Lawrence, Ryan Lawrence, was out on the uh, Scioto Creek getting into some nice brown trout as well for that youth day. Now, guys, I had a chance to check in with um, with, with Bill Broderick here at Dunkelbergers, and he's going to give us a couple tips if you're new or just getting into some trout fishing uh, for the opening day this weekend. Hi, my name is Bill Broderick. I'm the manager here at Dunkel Burgers. I'm the fishing manager, if you will. I've been with them since uh, for about 12 years now, since we opened our store in Broadheadsville. And pretty avid fisherman, been doing it all my life. And give you a couple ideas of what that we're using these days. Um, so uh, I like to start out with the kids because that's our future of fishing right there. And I'm a firm believer that um, nothing's really gonna beat it for the kids then uh, the classic trout worm. Easy to use, easy to follow, and it really does probably catch the most fish. Although I hate to say it because that's kind of a shh, but it is true. The worms still work. Um, one of the things that I try and get the kids to use here is it's a trout magnet and it's a little tiny jig hook. Um, it comes with the rubber legs. I'm not going to say the rubber legs don't work, but what I'm going to suggest to you for the kids is that you take that little piece of rubber off and just use the jig hooks. It comes with two in a package and put your live worm, just a regular trout worm, right on the end of that. It's going to keep it down. You can even put it on a bobber and they're going to feel the bite a little bit better and get it up off the bottom and they'll catch fish. So, for, so now we'll move into a spinning type of thing and I'm going to tell you the hottest uh, spinning lures over the last five six years that I've seen and one that we finally brought back in here we finally got got uh, got them back in is the CP swing on both stores I have a complete selection of CP swings and if I had one for every guy that's asked me for these things in the last year or two I have them already all sold so just let you know they're back um, and then I also the classic rooster tail, which is this color combination here. It's that yellow with the black spots with a black tail. Seems to be the hot little number for most people. And this, this catches fish also, guaranteed. Um, 
and then I, I do want to touch in with my uh, my favorite thing, which is fly fishing, um, and tell you that this time of year, um, going all the way through the winter until we have that first those first few major hatches, um, where the Hendrickson hatches and and things like that, which are not going to happen until that weather gets sunny and warms right up. You can't beat a stonefly. Um, these are what pretty much are the only things you're going to find in the stream all winter long and until the water warms up they're pretty much the only thing that trout are eating and um the 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 brown stone fly seems to be the best and i really like the rubber legs can't go wrong all right some great tips there bill thank you very much guys i hope you get out and enjoy this either some shad or some trout this weekend maybe the weather will cooperate hopefully the waters aren't too high and too fast let us get out and do a little bit but be sure you get out and get on them but from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy <music> Blackfish and porgy, both of those species back in play at the Jersey Shore. Tog, of course, uh, the one fishery that folks have been chomping at the bit for that April month uh, of fishing, right? It's open April 1st through the end of April. It's going on now. Um, you can check out the April edition of the Fisherman Magazine for a list of boats that are sailing up and down the Jersey Shore, because they'll tell you which boats are sailing for Tog, which ones are not. If you, can, if you can't head offshore, I highly recommend picking up some Tog jigs and some of the crabs, because everybody's got green crabs. They're widely available now at all the coastal uh, tackle shops, but you might want to try at the canal or along some of the jetty rocks. I do know that some boats are going out. Some boats were able to get out before all this rainy weather hit us. Uh, the big Mohawk was out again on Monday, April 1st, reported some keepers and shorts right off the get-go on Monday morning before the uh, bite fizzled out a little bit, but they went on the hunt. They found some other snags. They found their way through a handful of uh, tog and also some cod in the mix there as well. Remember, you can check out the latest weekend fishing reports every Monday over at thefisherman.com. All of our field editors are back making calls. North Jersey, Central Jersey, South Jersey, Nick Konachewski's Beach Talk, J.B. Casper's Freshwater, uh, Eric Burnley, of course, has his Delaware report as well. And again, you subscribers, you're gonna get that email every Monday to let you know, hey, the digital edition is ready to view. You got all that information, plus the latest reports are posted at thefisherman.com. What I do is I'll spend the first couple of days of each week after we've compiled the reports, and then I'm taking phone calls and text messages, I'm calling friends, uh, maybe even I get out myself when it's not raining, uh, and I'll try to find out where the latest bite is going into this weekend. Although I will tell you that's been a little tougher this week because of the sheer amount of, of rain that we've had. Just keep that in mind, because this is something that I mentioned last week. A lot of fresh water in the rivers and then pouring down into the bays, uh, it could push striped bass out and around the, the bay a little bit, uh, has them going out and spreading out. So the, the shoreline access, uh, guys are saying uh, for the most part, wading into the rivers, the bite has not really been hot. But I think that's because of the amount of fresh water. What we really need uh, uh, with these big fish moving in, I think we really need a spate of really nice weather, some warmer weather, so hopefully sometime next week. Now our next full moon comes on April 23rd, and I personally think that's the time when we're gonna see another push of good fish. I said it a few weeks ago, I think that's when we're really gonna start seeing the bluefish invading our inlets. We'll see some more black drum, uh, but uh, I'm finding out from friends in South Jersey, uh, dogwoods are blooming. And when the dogwoods bloom, the drum will boom. And again, I expect some tide runner weak fish middle of April or around that full moon uh, of April 23rd. But there is another lunar event next week, the new moon on April 8th. That is also another moon, even though it's the new one and not the big full one, it still is a lunar event that pushes a lot of water around. So if we've got a nice weekend coming up, which is expected, and then we've got that new moon on the 8th, you know, maybe next week things really start um, uh, breaking out a little bit more. And again, especially with a, a touch of more favorable weather. But I do seem to be talking about rain a lot 
I had these weekly video forecasts uh, for the last several weeks, April showers, May flowers, whatever. But if you watch on a regular basis, you know that I love the posted comments on our YouTube page. And I do my best to try to answer and respond to as many as possible. Sometimes on the page, sometimes here in the video. So we're in the Trenton area this week. Let's go to Let's Beer 99. Last week, the old Taylor ham versus pork roll debate came up. History for you. Trenton's John Taylor invented this wonderful New Jersey food product in 1856. He called it Taylor's Prepared Ham. Now this beautifully cured and smoked before packaging roll of pork, um, it was grossing $200,000 a year in sales uh, in the late 1800s. That's $7.3 million in today's money. Now. George Washington Case, a farmer and butcher from up 206 in Bellamede, he created his own recipe for this hickory smoked pork uh, in 1870, right? This was quite the competition in those late 1800s between the 1856 Taylor product and then the 1870 Case product. But along came the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906, which first created a legal definition for the word ham. It defined what ham is and what could be considered ham. Now, if you've ever read Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, you'll know why the Food and Drug Administration was ultimately implemented, right? So basically, the FDA defined ham as only being the meat that comes from the hind quarter of a pig. So certainly we're not talking about Pennsylvania Scrapple at this point. You know what I'm talking about. But only ham can be called ham, that's it. So according to federal law, you can't call pork roll ham, that's illegal. By the early 1900s, the Taylor family, which had eventually become uh, 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 Taylor Provisions, they were trying to trademark the term pork roll because they invented it in 1856. But when Case came around in 1870 and started using pork roll, nobody stopped them from doing it. So the FDA said, you know, it's too late. Pork roll is already part of the public consciousness in New Jersey. So we can continue the great Taylor ham versus pork roll debate, beer lover, but anyone who calls pork roll ham is violating federal law, committing a crime. That said, I prefer Taylor ham, Taylor brand pork roll to any of the others. The Trenton area is often considered the demarcation line at this point between New York and Philadelphia metro markets. New Yorker Johnny Appleseed also commented last week reminding us that New York marine waters are still closed to striped bass fishing. They will be until April 15th. It's okay to catch and release stripers in New York, but you can't have one on the boat. So if you're in New Jersey and you cross that line, do not put a 30 inch fish in the box and say, I'm from New Jersey. Doesn't, ha doesn't matter because that's a crime in New York to have that in the box. Now, old Johnny Appleseed did go on to say, quote, dirty Jersey keeping all the fish again before everyone else's season opens. You know what they say about green grass, John, it's always greener. And similar to the Taylor ham pork roll debate, I will respond to your statement with a question. Do you prefer Kleenex or tissue? Finally, folks, New York fluke regulations for 2024 are set. So if you're heading out of New Jersey in 2024, once the fluke season opens, here's what you're dealing with in New York. It's a three fish bag limit and a whopping 19 inch minimum size limit that will start in New York on May 1st. But don't worry, it's only 19 inches until August 1st. Because on August 2nd, it becomes 19 and a half inches in the state of New York. Now keep in mind, New Jersey uh, or New York season will be open 23 days longer than in New Jersey, but in order to get those extra 23 days, they had to go to a 19 and then a 19 and a half, a split season. I don't know how that's gonna work. Folks, you gotta remember that when fishing across state boundaries, you always have to adhere to those waters you're in at the time, right? So if you're fishing in New York, you have to, uh, you have to follow New York's regulations, but you're also going to have to follow New Jersey's regulations when you come back with fish in the hold. It goes both ways. New York, New Jersey, New Jersey, Delaware, wherever you are. That is slightly different here along this stretch of the Delaware River, I would tell you, in terms of licensing. 
um, the requirements issued by the states of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, um, there's a little bit of a, an allowance Freshwater New Jersey license, as long as you're on the Delaware, you'll find more of that information on page 27 of the New Jersey Freshwater Digest for 2024. You'll find that in tackle shops. You'll find that here as soon as you walk in the front door at Old School Outdoors. Now, don't forget to register to fish in marine waters, saltwaterregistry.nj.gov, and also click on that registration button on the right-hand side. You can also get your license and your trout stamp so you're a legal eagle heading into this opening weekend of trout fishing here in New Jersey. I would encourage you to stop by, visit John and the crew here at Old School Outdoors if you're looking to partake, especially in the Delaware Shad Run. I'm gonna be out here in another week or two myself to get into it. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, perhaps, to find some of those jumbo stripers coming all the way up to as far as the Calhoun Street Bridge. Remember, spawning stripers are on the move. You're allowed to keep the 28 to 31 inch fish but do your best to release those big girls. If you're sending me photos and you're sending me a picture of a big fish, I don't want the boga with a 30, 40 pound striper hanging vertically. Put your, belly, put your hand under that belly, release those fish appropriately. Big report, enjoy the trout season and hope to have more on a burgeoning and, and blossoming striped bass fishery in the Garden State. I said we were in, in gear three last week. Next week, I'm predicting we go to fourth gear. Catch them up. I'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.